Hi guys, Rick Malava here for SimplyMy.com. Um, I was looking through the forums this morning and I noticed uh, this post by uh, by Lecra asking uh, for suggestions on how you would model this helical corkscrew shape here. So I filled around with it for a little bit and I came up with uh, with an approach I think that works pretty well. So uh, let me show you what I did. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start out by creating a, uh, a polygon uh, cylinder. And I'm just going to do the interactive creation here and just give it a little tiny bit of height. And uh, what I want to do here is go into the channel box and center everybody. And then uh, what I can do is turn on shaded mode. And then, oh, i got to turn the little pop-ups that come out there off, but uh, anyway, I'll do that later. So I'll select the vertex here, and then holding the control and the right mouse button, I'm going to change that vertex selection into faces. So I just basically select that whole top face there. Okay, and um, uh, actually I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Let me go back out. Uh, now what I'm going to do is, uh, from the uh, right side view, I'm going to create an EP curve. Create EP curve tool. And I'm going to just go from, uh, using grid snapping, I'm going to go from here, and then go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Another point there. Boop. Okay, come back out. Oh, actually, while I'm here, let's take this, and let's move it down. Just so it's sort of like there. We'll just eyeball it. Okay, and now I'm going to turn that grid off because it's in the way. And then I'm going to come over here. Oh, not vertex faces, vertex. I'm going to select that vertex again, and now holding the control key, right, right mouse button, change this selection to faces, and then pick this curve. Oh, not getting ahead of myself again. Sorry. Pick that curve. <laughs> and I'm going to go up here to, uh, I have it on my uh, custom uh, shelf tray up here, but I'm going to go to uh, uh, the uh, rebuild curve options here, and I'm going to set that to 10 just for now, and then hit. Uh, Oh, already hit apply. So you can see I've got an option turned on on my curves that show curve points. So you can see I just took that curve that just basically had one span and broke it up into ten spans. So I'm going to close that. I just want to do that because I want to get some uh, some control over how these uh, extrudes along that curve there. So now, <laughs> finally, I'm going to come here and select this vertex uh, right uh, mouse button and control. Go to faces. And then I'm going to pick this curve, and then I'm going to come here and finally say extrude curve. And then we're going to go to the channel box again. We're going to go down to uh, divisions, and for now I'm going to ma make that match the number of spans that I had in the curve. And I'm going to go down here to taper, and I'm going to taper this down, something like that. And um, actually, as I look at this, I'm going to back out of this a little bit. Um, this base of the, this is going to eventually be the cone shape at the center and this base is too wide right now so before I do that extrude I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take this and I'm going to shrink this in a little bit. Something like so. Uh, actually what I could do is uh, da -da 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 -da. Well, yeah, no, I don't want to. I don't want to futz with that too much because if you try to change, use the uh, uh, the input node uh, settings uh, after you've done some manipulation, you can screw this up. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So that looks better to me. So now uh, let's do that extrusion again. So come down here, go to vertex, pick this point, uh, change that to faces, pick this curve, hold the shift key down while you pick the curve so you can pick them both and then do uh, extrude face and then now once again come back over to the channel box let's make this uh, 10 divisions and then we're going to add a little taper Oop, not a twist we're going to add a taper eventually we're going to add a twist but just you know shrink it down like that that represents that sort of inner cone shape and now we're going to come down here and we're going to add a twist and I fiddled with this a little bit and I'm going to go with a twist of uh, 1,000. This is a, this is the number of degrees that you're twisting this as the, you're extruding that face up. So it's going to look kind of funky there. And uh, so this is doesn't have enough resolution in the uh, number of divisions. So I'm going to bump this up to, let's say, 50. And now that looks a little bit better. 
Now, what I can do is with this selected, I can come in here and I can grab one of these edges, like this one right here. Right? And then I want to deselect everything below that. And I want to deselect this one edge that's going to come over the top here. Right? And now, what you can do is uh, come in here and do an extrude edge. And then go from the center and hit the R key for extrude and just extrude that out. Like that. It's magic. Okay? So you get that get that corkscrew straight. Now, in the process of doing this, this surface, this auger surface is uh, attached to this cone shape. So uh, we've created what's known as non-manifold geometry. It's uh, basically a, a surface that c could not exist in real life. So what we have to do is separate this auger part from the cone now. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down, I'm going to pick this face, and double click that face, and you'll see it'll just pick the auger part out of that. And then I'm going to uh, using my marking menus, I'm going to go shift right about my mouse button and I'm going to extract those faces. And now I've got two separate surfaces again. Okay. So now I'm going to take this surface and we need to add some thickness to it. So I'm just going to come up here and extrude that surface. And I'm going to just push it up a little bit. Now I have two sided faces, uh, two sided lighting turned on so this surface is inside out and that's why it's showing up as black. So once again up here, I, these are the things I kind of tend to use the most, so I just made a custom bar and put them up here. I'm going to flip the normals on this face, so when I do that, it's now facing the right way. So now we've got that, pretty much the shape, and you can play with this cone in the middle to fix it. In fact, now that it's been separated out, I can actually use the history on this cone, and I can come back to the uh, initial extrude, and I can uh, do things like set the, uh, the twist value back to zero, and, oh, wait, before I do that, uh, you see that causes an issue because there's still a connection between this cone and this surface here. So let's pick the surface, delete the history, and now let's pick this cone, come back to here, and I can reduce the uh, complexity of this inner cone here while still saving the cone so we can use it to uh, finish modeling up that inner shape. So you can come here and take the twist and set it back to zero and you can set say the divisions back to ten and uh, 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 we got a little bit of wackiness going on here because of uh, probably some history left on it or something that I did inadvertently when I did this earlier I didn't get these uh, these edges separating what I can do to fix this is just select the surface isolate it take all the vertices here and just do a a merge verts and that connects everything back up in that cone shape. So if that happens to you, you can fix it that way. I think I've got W, do I have? Uh oh, I thought I had a soft select now. So there you go. So now you got the cone shape and you got the auger shape on the outside. And you can come in here now and, and just edit things up to uh to get it to look uh to look closer to uh to what you had here. Uh, looks like he's got some little things that he adds in there and fiddles around with the cone at the top. But uh, there you go. I hope this helps you out, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll, uh, I'll put it up on my channel on YouTube. Take care.